Anybody's on? I can't tell. Can they hear me? They can't. Hello, hello everyone. Hello, is somebody there? They can, they can uh, confirm that they can hear me. Put it so I can see somebody, Joshua. You can't. You can only see comments. Okay. Can somebody write in the comment section if you can hear me? If you're there. Is anyone on? Joshua, are you sure we're on? Because they're always on. I do, but it's on the visual. Is anybody there? Write something in the comment section. Great, Dr. Claudia Claire. Nice to see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Can you hear me? Just write something and let me know that you can hear me. Can you hear me, Dr. Claudette? Can somebody let me know that they can hear me? This is Jen Harvey. Yes, you can. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, sis, for joining us. Uh, it's 7 p.m. and we're just waiting for a few others to join us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I pray that you are having an amazing day. It's raining here, cats and dogs, in New York City. We're just waiting for somebody else. You're the first, Dr. Claudette, Dr. Claire. So we'll just continue, um, or Chief Prelate is not with us today, but the message goes on. Okay, James Walker, thanks for joining. Thanks for joining as you guys join. I'm asking you to tag, share, and invite. Tag, share, and invite others to hear the gospel of the good news. Thanks, James, for being here. We will continue just to wait a few more minutes and then we will begin our lesson for this evening. Continue to, uh, I'm having a great day, Dr. Claire says, it's raining here as well, yes. And it's gonna to rain tomorrow in New York City as well. And it continues, I guess, until Friday. And they said the weather will turn and it will be um, great weather thereafter. Okay, James, good evening. How are you doing, James? We're waiting for others to join us. Barbara, thank you, Barbara, for joining us. Good evening, Judah. Love, joy, and peace to each and every one of you. Same to you, Barbara. Thank you for joining. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So we're just, I'm encouraging you to tag, share, and invite tag, share, and invite um, as we continue just to wait for a few others, and then we will begin. So we have Dr. Claudette Clare, we have James Walker, and we have Barbara Mac... Mac I don't want to mess up your name. I'm just going to say Barbara or Miss Barbara. Come on. Come on, Judah. Come on, Judah. Tag, share, invite. Tag, share, and invite. We have a really, really amazing lesson this evening. Tag, share, and invite. Dolores Bryant, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Tag, share, and invite. Cicely Joseph, you, you tagged her, you, you know, are you, you're sharing it with her, Dr. Claire. Um, Shante Smith, nice. Dr. Claire, you're doing an amazing job. Tag and share, tag, share, and invite. Ramona, welcome. Welcome, Ramona. Welcome, welcome. Good evening, one. Good evening, all. It is uh, precisely 7.04, and in a few minutes, we are going to begin. We are going to begin. We're just waiting for a few more people to join us, and we will begin. We will begin. Tag, share, invite. 
tag, share, and invite. Or Chief Prelet is not here physically doing the teaching, but I know he's watching. And we want to do what we have always done when he's on, you know, just to share the message. He's a man of the word and he's an evangelist at, at, at heart. He wants people to hear the gospel. For the Bible says, uh, how can they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? So I'm encouraging you to tag, share, and invite. Tag, share, and invite as we just give it a few more minutes and we are going to join. Oh, welcome Ramona, Dolores, welcome. Lisa, welcome Lisa Lester, welcome Lisa, welcome Lisa. And Dr. Claire has been really tagging and she and Barbara, welcome, 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 welcome. So we're going to begin in a few minutes and um, I am hoping others, Minnie, how is Minnie? Minnie's my girl, how is Minnie Jordan doing? Many can keep a secret. I was in Florida celebrating with her chief prelate and Minnie was the only person who knew that I was traveling. She really kept that. Oh, Dion Johnson, my sister from another mother. Oh, Dion, welcome, 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 welcome. In the absence of our chief prelate, he's physically not here, but he's here in spirit. And I know he's watching. So we just want to, the Bible says we ought to give honor to whom honor is due. So we just want to say, uh, just address and say thank you. I am saying thank you to our chief prelate for this opportunity to sit in his seat and really represent him. And I hope I do so in excellence. I'm not here to fill his shoe because those are very large shoe that I will never and can never fill, but I'm here to stand behind it and represent him. Okay. Welcome one. Welcome all. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Oh, for some of you, you may know me and for some, you may not. My name is Jen Harvey of the Bible Says International Ministries and the Ministries of the huddle. I'm welcoming all God's people. Thank you for joining us because ministry is never ministry without people. We need people for it to be ministry. So I thank each and every person for being here. I am going to just continue to ask you to tag, share, and invite. Minnie, I am going to ask you to remind me because I am new at this. So remind me not to end the session without showing ways to give. We never come into the presence of God without giving. Or Chief Prelate pours in us day after day, week after week, year after year, and ministry takes money. It takes money for it to grow, for you to evangelize, for to pay the bills. So we always give, all right? Because the Bible promises, give and it shall be given unto thee, good measures, pressed down, shaken together and running over. So many don't allow me to end without showing ways to give. Vicki Young, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am going to begin, but we can continue to tag, share, and invite. Once more, I want to thank our chief prelate for this opportunity to represent him and to represent our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome, everyone. Pastor Winroy Hall, welcome. I am going to, I'm not going to be before you long. I am not as articulate and as verbose as our chief prelate. So my message is I'm going to be short, sweet, and I'm going to just leave. I am already in my seat. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, we bless you, we praise you, we worship you, and we magnify your name. Father, Lord God, you said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. This evening, as we are about to break the bread of life, I pray, oh God, that you will unstop our deaf and ears. I pray, oh Father, Lord God, that the power of the Holy Spirit will illuminate our minds. Oh Father, Lord God, that we may 
and take hold of the truth in the name of Jesus. Give us the grace to understand it. Give us the grace to receive it. For the, it, is, it is said that truth must be heard, truth must be believed, truth must be embraced, and truth must be acted upon. It is when we act upon the truth of God's word that we yield the blessings thereof. So, Father, we thank you, and we bless you, and we praise you, and we worship you, and we magnify your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed, and let the Ecclesia say, Amen. Today, the title of my brief discourse is Desperate Times Calls for Desperate Measures. Desperate Times Calls for Desperate Measures. If there's ever a period in history, in the history of man, where desperation looms from the four corners of the earth, it is now. Men are desperate. And when I say men, this is gender neutral. I mean, people are desperate. People know not what to do. To, to have the results that they need to have and to solve many of the problems that they have. Yet you and I call the believer, you and I call the church, you and I call the ecclesia, we have been outfitted for victory. For the Bible declares that all things that pertaineth to life and to godliness has been given unto us. And when Jesus said it was finished, he robbed hell, death, and the grave. He regained all that Adam had so unwittingly and so vicariously relinquished to Satan. One would be amazed how ingenious people can be when they are confronted with giants calamities and catastrophes, that which they say they cannot do, they find strength they never realized they possessed to bring it to pass, that which they say they would never do, they now embrace with eagerness. First and foremost, desperation can make one act for good or evil. I'm going to repeat that because that is a loaded statement. First and foremost, desperation can make one act for good or evil. What determines the direction of our actions is the condition of our heart. What determines the direction of our action is the conditions of our hearts. I didn't say we act, what determine our action is if we are Christians or not. For many Christians will do unscrupulous things when they're caught between a rock and a hard place. Many of us, we have accepted Jesus as Savior, but we refuse to accept him as Lord and Master. And so when we are caught in a rock and a hard place, it really shows us who we are and it really shows us where we are. Desperation can cause humans to put away socially accepted norms, cultural cliches, pride, religion, and self-ambition. Let us examine three scenarios where individuals who were desperate did extraordinary things to yield extraordinary outcomes. As we highlight each story, I beseech you to ponder if you are in the place of desperation and the price you are willing to pay to get to your desired end. All three events are chronicled in the synoptic gospel. They are called synoptic because they can be viewed as one. And that would be Matthew, Mark, and Luke because many of the accounts are similar. And this is why they're called the Synoptic Gospel. The first that I want to bring to your attention is what I have coined the four insane friends. The story is encased in Mark chapter two, verses one to five. Now Jesus was in Capernaum and he was preaching. Four crazy men came with their friend on a stretcher who was paralyzed. They sought Jesus's help to heal their friend. However, the crowd was so thick they could not get close to Jesus. They begged for entry, but each had their own needs, leaving behind the conventional 
they went upon the roof. The Bible says they uncovered the roof and let their friend down before Jesus. There's an old adage that if the mountain cannot come to Mohammed, then Mohammed must go to the mountain. They couldn't get through what you and I know as the door, conventionally speaking. And so the Bible says they uncovered the roof. When you think about the roof being uncovered, you're just thinking about a hole being made. But look at not only the labor that had to be put in, the thought that had to be put in, but the expense because they have to pay for this roof. But they were determined that their friend must be healed. And before I forget it, I want to part here and bring it out because I may forget it later as I um, put all three stories together and bring to bear, extrapolate truth and principles from all three. But let me stop here because this is important and I don't want to forget. Or Bishop is reminding us, please tag, like, and share. Please tag, like, and share. Now here's where I'm parking friends. Now we have this saying that all we need is Jesus and all we need is the Holy Spirit. If you are, if you have that mindset, you are absolutely in error. If you have that mindset that all you need is Jesus and the Holy Spirit, you are in error. For God works in men, through men, and for men. Almost everything that God will do, he does in a man, for a man, and through men. You need men. You need the assistance of men. For no man is an island and no man can stand alone. You need somebody who knows more than you, who is stronger than you, who has capacity, the capacity that you lack, who has the wherewithal that you lack. This gentleman would never have been healed except for the tenacity of his friends. You need men. So I am going to tell you right here, Bishop put, people are God's commodity. Let me tell you this as soon as he put it up. It doesn't matter how much a Fortune 500 company without people, you and I, it would never get anywhere. We are great, God's greatest commodity, humankind. So when you're praying, and I'm getting back to the or lesson, you ask God to send you destiny helpers. You ask God to send you burden bearers. Ask God to send you men and women with capacity. Ask God to send you men and women with resources. Ask God to send you men and women with intellect. And let me tell you this, I know I'm going to get flagged for it, but I know my bishop is going to say, yeah, yeah. Many times people come in our presence and God has outfitted them to help us. And because of inferiority complexes and sometimes pride, we fail to see that we need the help and God has sent us help. One thing that I, God has given me the grace is to be able to say to somebody, give people com compliments. You are brilliant. You are beautiful. You are well-spoken. You are knowledgeable. Please, folks, please, please let us lay aside our idiosyncrasies and our proclivities and our propensities that are stopping men from helping us. Let us get back to our study. And so these four men, they uncovered the roof because they had made up in their minds, look at the quality of friendship they have. This is what you know as friendship. This is not fair weather friends that people only know you when you have something. People only know you when things are going great. But when the rubber hits the road, do you know that's when you will know who your friends are? That's when you will know who your friends are when the rubber hits the road, when you're caught between a rock and a hard place, when you have done something in your human frailty. Today, um, a friend shared something with me and she said, Jen, I wasn't going to share it with you, but I'm going to share it with you. She says, I have fallen. I did something that I should not have done. I said, my sister, 
I have been there. Let me tell you something. The Bible says uh, a good man falleth seven times, uh, but he gets back up. That's when you know you have friends. Uh, nobody that's going to scorn you, uh, but somebody who's going to encourage you. Uh, somebody who's going to say, the Bible says, uh, if we freely confess our sins, uh, that he's righteous and just. Not only will he forgive us, uh, but he will cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Those are the kinds of friends that you want uh, that will whisper in your head hearing you're more than able you can do it you have capacity god has called you you have been outwitted for victory and so these friends they weren't fair weather friends that's the kind of friends that you and i need we don't need as many in number as we need those of quality and too many of us, we have so many numbers, but we don't have quality, we don't have capacity, we don't have friends with depth, we don't have those kinds of friends. When Jesus saw such a great display of faith, he forgave his sins and healed their friend. It implied it was the man's sins that rendered him paralyzed. Jesus dealt with the root cause of the problem. I want you not to miss this. Jesus dealt with the root cause cause of the problems. Nowadays, you and I, we are so busy treating symptoms and we are looking at the symptoms and we are not looking at the root cause. It is like going to the doctor and the doctor tells you that you have hypertension and he gives you medication to cause the symptoms to be abated, to cause the symptoms to be tolerable, but he's treating the symptoms and he's not treating the root cause. What if he told you if you're obese, lose some weight? What if he told you if you're overly stressed that you must manage your stress? What if he told you that if you need more sleep, you need to change your diet? Those are the root cause of your problem that you are addressing. And many of us, I taught yesterday um, that Christians, Christians can be lazy and I'm gonna get to it. I've always said it, bind Satan, we're ready. Loose, we're ready. Work, we're not. Integrity, nah, just bind and loose. We're lazy. Let me get back to it. So we need to treat the root cause. Jesus did it. He went to the cause, the root of this man's problem, and he fixed it. Verse 11. I say unto thee, arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. What has been spoken about you, but you fail to activate it with obedience? What is it that God has said about you? He has said that your heads are never tailor. He has spoken that you're first and never last. He says that you are more than able. He says if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the fat of the land. What is it that God has said when the Bible lets us know that his words are yea and amen, but but, but you fail to activate what he has spoken about your life by obedience. The second person that I want you to look at is the woman with the issue of blood. And this story is nestled in the book of Luke, Luke 8 verses 43 through 48. The Bible says she had suffered much at the hands of of many physicians. She was ostracized. She was demarginalized. She was scorned. She was spoken about. She had lost her identity. She had lost her dignity. She was now the nameless woman with the issue of blood. Did you realize nobody knows her name? She was tagged by her condition. My God, my God. She was labeled by her condition. No longer did they call her Jen Harvey. It was the woman with the issue of blood. But one day she heard, let me stop here and ask you a question. What is it you're hearing? What is it you are hearing? The Bible says that one day she heard that a man called Christ Jesus was coming by. She must have heard the commotion and things he had done. And she said, this is 
D-Day, meaning the day of deliverance, my day of deliverance. She put her life on the line. In her mind, she was a living dead. She had nothing else to lose. She had nothing else to lose. Everything, she had lost hope. And this was her last ditch effort. And she was not about to she was not about, I'm going to be very, very formal. She was not a, about to allow the Mosaic laws or the Pharisees to cause her to miss this golden opportunity. She came out. She should not be out. She was bleeding by, by way of the Mosaic laws. She's unclean. Not only should she not be in the public, but she should not even touch a man. Even her own husband wasn't even with her. Yet a stranger, a teacher, Rabboni, and she touched him. Jesus did not condemn her for her act. He commended her for her faith. The third person that I want to look at, we find him blind Bartimaeus. The Bible says a certain man. When you see the word certain in the Bible, a certain man, a certain woman, a certain thing, a certain place, it means it is something of significance. It is noteworthy. And the Bible says this blind man, blind Bartimaeus, he was begging. This was his profession. This is what he did. He begged and he begged and he begged. This is what he did. But he also heard. He heard that Jesus Jesus was coming by and he decided uh, that today was going to be his day of deliverance. Uh, and there was a great crowd similarly to the woman with the issue of blood uh, and they thronged Jesus. Uh, but he says, I can't see him but I'm going to cause him to see me. We have to use what we have. And many of us, we find fault. I don't have this. I don't have that. Yes, you're right. You don't have this. Yes, you're right. You don't have that. Moses, what is that that you have in your hand? It's a rod. Stretch it forward. He didn't have eyes to see Jesus, but he had a voice to cause Jesus to hear and to see him. And the Bible says, that he cried out, son of David, have mercy upon me. Son of David, have mercy upon me. And when the crowd started to bid him to be quiet, the Bible says he cried even the louder. And then Jesus called him. When he was on his way to see Jesus, I want you to realize and take note of what he did. The Bible says faith without works is dead. He didn't wait until he got to Jesus. He didn't wait until Jesus opened up his eyes. The Bible says as he walked to Jesus, he took off the cloak that labeled him a blind beggar. What cloak are you wearing? What is it that you are wearing? That does not match what God has spoken about you. He tossed it off. He says, this thing that has held me captive, this thing that has labeled me, that has caused me to be looked down on, I am taking it off because I am free. And he did it before his eyes were open. Why did he do it? Don't miss this. His eyes were closed. His physical eyes were closed, but his mind was open. His eyes physically, they were closed, but his mind was open. He was positioned and he was prepared for a miracle. This is why Many of us, we don't see the mighty move of God in our hands, in our lives, because blind Bartimaeus didn't sit at the gate and call Jesus. He went to him. Here are some truths and some pearls that I have taken out from these three examples. Great faith refuses to take no for an answer. Great faith refuses to to take no for an answer. Do not take no for an answer. Do not. If God has spoken this thing and you have petitioned heaven, let me tell you something. 
I often tell people, and Bishop, you're on the line. If I am wrong, please correct me. I tell people God answers the prayer of every believer. It's yes, it's no, or it's wait. A silence doesn't mean no. The reason why we say God doesn't answer our prayers is because he doesn't give us the answer we desire. Because my son asked me for a lollipop and I said no, it doesn't mean I didn't answer, respond to him. I just did not give him the answer that he wanted. So God answers the prayer of every believer is either yes, is no, or wait. Once it's not a no, don't give up. Silence does not mean no. Great faith thinks outside of the box. The problem with you and I is we're too conventional. The problem with you and I is that we are too, how much do I put it now? I'm going to leave that alone. We are too conventional. You must think outside of the box. To have something you've never had, you must do something you've never done. If you're doing the same thing the same way and you're not getting the outcome, Einstein says it's insanity. Change the way you're doing it. You're going out and you are doing what you ought not to do and you're ending up with a broken heart every time and you continue to do it. When are you going to learn? Think outside of the box. Don't miss this. Tradition is a guide. It's not a jailer. Tradition is a guide. It's not a jailer. Don't you ever forget that. Another thing that I want you to keep at the forefront of your mind, don't allow a tragedy to change your theology. Don't allow tragedies to cause you to give up. Don't allow a tragedy to change your theology. Great faith will yield great results. Great faith will yield great results. Show me a man with great faith and I will show you a man with much works because faith without works is dead. You have great faith, you watch, you will yield great results. The measure of your effort will determine the magnitude of your reward. The measure of your effort will, will determine the magnitude of your reward. Great faith is active. Great faith is active. It does more than it speaks. Ooh, that's a mouthful. Great faith does more than it speaks. The church has many words, but we have few results. Wow. Ouch. The church have many words, but we have few results. Great faith will get God's attention. I want you to realize, and I know I may get a little flack for this, but in all three instances, the Bible didn't say these people were saved. The Bible didn't say they are Christians. The Bible didn't say they were godly. Great faith gets God's attention. Not only does it get God's attention, but it also gets man's attention. Great faith. Great faith gets God's attention, but it also gets man's attention. The Bible didn't mention these people's religion, denomination. Jesus commented on their faith. God responds to faith. I can guarantee you, there were those who said, wow, in amazement. Or why didn't I think like that? Great faith will cost you something. Great faith will cost you something. 
the four friends had to incur the expense of the repair of the roof. Even the four friends might have incurred ridicule. Blind Bartimaeus also, great faith is going to cost you something. The woman with the issue of blood could have been stoned to death based on Levitical laws. Great faith, don't miss this, my brethren. Great faith is rare. It separates men from boys and damsels from women. Great faith is rare. It separates men from boys and damsels from women. Great faith is cultivated. It doesn't happen overnight. A measure of faith is given to all men, but great faith must be pursued. It must be acquired. Laziness is an enemy to great faith. Laziness is an enemy to great faith. Laziness is an enemy to great faith. Notice these individuals did extraordinary things and they yielded extraordinary outcomes. Now let us look at some reasons why, even in our desperation, we are not moved to action. One, many of us are lazy. I heard a man of God said, and I spoke about it yesterday, Christians are one of the laziest sets of people he has ever met. He says, we are a people who love miracle, but we do not see that in the work there is opportunities for advancement. There is opportunities for growth. There is opportunities for us to excel. In the work and in the opportunity, if you know how to work it, it will set you above and beyond. It was just, and our bishop is here, it was just two hours ago that bishop asked me, can you come on? That's why the Bible says we must be prepared in season and out of season. The Bible says we ought to be apologists. We must be able to defend our faith. We must have an answer to for every man. You can't wait. If you want to be used of God, you can't wait until someone asks you something. Then you're going to look Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Or is it, uh, does Genesis come before Exodus? or Exodus comes before. Prepare yourself. I'm going to tell you something and most people think I may be crazy. And yes, there's a little bit of crazy in me. Every now and again, and more often than not, in my bedroom, I get dressed, I stand before the mirror and I speak to an audience that is not there. I can't wait until an audience come because it is in the preparation that God brings it. We are waiting for God to bring it, then we get prepared. God does not work like that. So I will get dressed and I will sit and I will answer questions as if someone is speaking to me. No one is. And I sit down, I look and I listen to my verbiage. I look at my posture. I listen to my vernacular and I refine and fine tune myself because I am preparing for that day when God lifts the veil. That's what great faith does. It sees the opportunity in its mind. It seizes the opportunity in its mind. It prepares in its mind and it prepares privately. No wonder David could kill Goliath because he had killed a bear and a lion privately. Preparation. Preparation. When you are adequately prepared, you will produce excellent product. The other thing that causes us not to be moved to action is that we are ignorant. 
We are ignorant. We don't realize what is going on and we lack the wherewithal how to pursue. I'm going to leave you this phrase and never you ever forget it. The strength of the oppressor lies in the ignorance of the oppressed. My God, that's a mouthful. The strength of the oppressor lies in the ignorance of the oppressed. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And this is physically and spiritually. If you don't know who your oppressors are, if you don't know how they function, you will perpetually and continually be oppressed. The strength of the oppressor lies in the ignorance of the oppressed. But the Bible says that it is not because knowledge is not available. It is because we have rejected it. It's going to take too much work for me to open up the holy pericope. It is going to take too much work for me to study to show myself approved unto God. It is going to take too much. I am too proud to sit at the feet of our chief prelate and learn from him. I'm too proud to go and ask a question. I am too proud to say, I don't know. The strength of the oppressor lies in the ignorance of the oppressed. Another thing that causes us not to be able to go even in our desperation is that many of us, this is sad, this is sad, but many of us, we have accepted our plight. This is how it is and this is how it is going to remain. Lord, somebody just said, have mercy on us. Everything that you and I need is in the cross or, or Bishop teaches manifestation. The first part of that word is man. Man must agree with God. Man must partner with the Holy Spirit. Man must desire more. You see, I didn't put God in the front, in the forefront. It is manifestation. Man must desire more. Man must agree with God. Man must partner with the Holy Spirit. Man must believe God, but man must also believe him in himself. Many of you think that God can just barge into your life and do whatever he wants however he wants it. That is not true. God has made you a free moral agent. He's not going to usurp your authority. When blind Bartimaeus approached Jesus, Jesus saw that he was blind, but he did not take the liberty to say that he wanted his sight. Maybe he wanted a coin. He's a beggar. So because, because, you are in that situation, don't stay there. We just came out of yesterday, Resurrection Sunday. Everything is in the cross. Your deliverance is in the cross. Your healing is in the cross. Your provision is in the cross. Your protection is in the cross. Whatever you need, it is in the cross. Will you not find out the principles of the areas of your lives where you're lacking? Will you not learn them? Will you not apply them? Will you not partner with the Holy Spirit? Will you not get into the word of God and get the word of God into you? Will you not become proficient in prayer? Will you not cry out like Jacob? I will not let you go until you bless me. Oh, Lord. Genesis 1, verses 28. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion and have dominion and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. I don't know if many of you can see this banner behind me. I was on a mission trip in Ghana, and as I laid in my hotel room, I heard, born to bless, wired to win, engineered to endure, and designed to dominate. 
and it has become my mantra. That's how I live. I was born to be a blessing. I was wired to win. I was engineered to endure and I was designed to dominate. I will not allow sin to rule me and to have dominion over me. I will not allow it. I will not allow the naysayers. They cannot tell me who I am. They cannot tell me what I can have. Oh, I wish the Negro or the Negress will tell me how far I can go. They cannot. You must not accept anything less than that which was won for you and wrapped in the cross. Don't accept your situation. As long as you're alive, there is hope. It doesn't matter how long you have been there. I keep, I have said this several times. I don't look like anything that I have been through. I have been in the desert for 10 years. 10 years God kept me in the desert. When I tell you it was a hard place, I'm not going back. Sin, I'm not going back. I'm not laying with a man who's not my husband. I am not in the gossiping. I, I'm not going back. It was 10 hard, harsh years. But I never accepted it. I had two things with me, faith and an open Bible. Broke, embezzled, scorned. And look at me now. I refuse to accept where I was. Don't accept it, my brothers. Don't accept it, my sisters. You're well able to take the land. A, a just man fall at seven times, but he rise back up. Anything that has a beginning certainly has an end. The Bible says, and God remembered Noah. I know you may be shut in in some areas of your life, but God, he has a calendar. He has a timetable. It is set with your name and a date, but work with him. He's going to pull you out. He's going to pull you out. He's going to pull you out. When I petition God, when I petition God, I tell God, listen to what the book of Isaiah says for your, your situation. 43, 20, 26, put me in remembrance. Let us plead together, declare thou that thou may be justified. The Bible tells you that you must bring forth your strong reason in Isaiah 41, 21. Present your case, says the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, says the King of Jacob. How do I petition God? Oh, how do I petition God? How do I petition God? You are a tither, mini. You are a giver, mini. You are faithful to the kingdom. Now go before God and ask God and ask the mercies of God to help you. Father, Lord God, you know I'm a tither. You know I'm a giver, Lord. I have undergirded your servant. Oh, Father, I've given to the poor. Oh, Father, Lord God, I've not de denied and despised your name. I've given to the work of the... Let's talk about, oh God, my enemy don't like me. God says, I don't want your cry baby emotion. He says, bring your strong reasons. What are your strong reasons? Oh God, if we know that we can petition, it's a court. Petition, bring your strong reasons. I can never be poor and I can never have lack. Oh, I got reasons that will take days when I laid out before God why I can never be poor and experience lack. If I like to keep things clean, if I know how to be judicious with what God has blessed me with. Folks, bring your strong reasons. Bring your strong reasons. Hezekiah did it. The Bible says in 2 Kings 20 verses 1 through 7, in those days Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, this is what the Lord says, put your house in order because you are going to die. You will not recover. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O oh Lord, but what have you done? Have you done anything so God can and remember 
Have you done anything in the house of the Lord? Have you paid your tithes? Have you given up your offering? Do you have a teachable spirit? Do you help in the house of the Lord? Do you help with the upkeep of the ministry? What have you done so you can bring it to the remembrance of the Lord? I'm going to end here. I'm going to end here before I get too, too happy. There is something that the word of God does inside of me. I have what I call the triangular trade route. And Bishop told me, I'm not going to tell you what Bishop told me. All I do is I go to work, I do ministry, and I come home. Work, ministry, home. That's all I do. And so I get very excited at the things of God. Very ex excited. Very excited about the things of God. Folks, I have made up my mind that for God I live and for God I die. I have made up my mind for God I live and for God I die. I don't see the man, the woman, the boy, or anything by the grace of God and the power of his Holy Spirit that can cause me to turn back. We need to get to that place. I am happy in the Lord. Amen, Dr. Bannister. I have made up my mind. For God I live and for God I die. I thank God for all you beautiful people. Thank you for joining us today. I hope what you have heard does not go through one ears and come through the next. When um, the angel presented himself to Mary and told Mary she should have a child, she said, how could this be? Seen I know not a man, but the Bible says she pondered it in her heart. What you have heard today, ponder it in your heart. What you have heard today, take out some paper Say, I've got to change. What I've been doing isn't working. I need to build my faith. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Come on the Zoom sessions when our chief prelate is teaching. Go into the sanctuary. I know that there is an availability of... um. I know that there's an availability of Facebook, but there's nothing like being in the house of the Lord. I was in Florida just a couple of weeks ago, and the liberty that is in that house, I walked up in that place. I was dancing and carrying on like I owned it. That's the liberty that's in that house. Why wouldn't you show up when you have access to it? Fill that house. Use your time, your talents, and your treasure to bless the things of God. And remember always to walk in truth. I am done. I am done. We are living in desperate times. And desperate times call for desperate actions. Do something you have never done to get what you have never had. Do it. Stick to it. Get accountability partners, people who will hold you accountable. Pastor Halsey, take advantage of access. Take advantage of opportunities. Opportunities. Please take advantage of them. Please take advantage of them. We're going to pray and then we're going to give. We're going to pray and then we're going to give. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, we bless you, we praise you, we worship you, and we magnify your name. Father Lord God, we thank you. Father Lord God, for from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is worthy to be praised. Thank you, Father Lord God, because we're still living in a land, a land that we have access to the word, a land that we can still have our Bibles, a land that we can still gather to worship you. So Father Lord God, I pray, I pray 
pray for each and every person under the sound of my voice. I pray, oh Father Lord God, that the morsels of truth that we have heard today, I pray that it will go deep down in the soil of our souls. I pray that it will take root. Let it be, oh Father Lord God, mixed and mingled with faith and may it go down and take root and germinate and bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, even unto a hundredfold in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father Lord God, let us examine ourselves in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, the Bible says to thine own self, be true. Let us be truthful about where we are. Let us be truthful about what needs to be done to take us, oh Father Lord God, from the pit and to propel us in the palace in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for your people, Lord God. Touch our minds in the name of Jesus. For the mind is the battleground. Give us the grace to believe you. For the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. Father, every evil word that has been spoken against your people, every assignment of the enemy against us, in the mighty name of Jesus, for the Bible says, who is it who has spoken when the Lord God has not commanded it? Every evil word, I speak as one sent, I stand in the gap, and I pull it out of the realm of the Spirit, in the name of Jesus, and I trample it underfoot. Oh, oh Father, Lord God, give your people an open heaven under which to live. Let not the sun smile as my day or the moon by night. I pray for us, oh Father, Lord God. I pray for restoration in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh Father God, that you will restore. Restore unto us, oh Father, Lord God, the years that the locust, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm has destroyed. The Bible says, even, oh Father, Lord God, the captive, the legal captive of the strong shall be delivered everywhere, oh Father, Lord God by your works, by your deeds, or a failure to work, Father Lord God, that has brought us into captivity. I pray, oh Father God, that you will lose us. Lose us by your mercies. Lose us by your power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, Father Lord God, I lift up our chief prelate before you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I'm asking you, oh Father Lord God, surround him. I'm asking you to lay, oh God, the weight of your glory upon him. I'm asking you to be with him in separate troubles. I'm asking you to show up as Rafa in his life. I'm asking you to remember the ministry of entrusted in his care. I'm asking you to remember his maiden. I'm asking you to remember his man child in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, Father, Lord God, I'm asking you to deal bountifully with him in the name of Jesus. Remember, Lord God, the leadership of Judah. Remember, Lord God, uh, all the pastors on this line. Uh, oh, Father, Lord God, uh, remember them in the name of Jesus. Uh, remember, oh, Father God, overseer Bannister. Remember, Pastor Winroy Holler in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth uh, and all the other pastors. Uh, oh, Father, Lord God, that are on this line, all the other leaders, uh, all the other ministers in the name of Jesus. Uh, I'm asking you, oh, Father God, to enlarge their coast. Uh, I'm asking you to extend their borders in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm asking you, oh Father Lord God, send destiny helpers to them. I'm asking you to send burden bearers. I'm asking you to send men and women with intellect. I'm asking you to send men and women with resources of time, of talent. Men and women who will always walk in truth in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh Father, set about our chief prelate and these leaders, hers and Aaron, who will hope all their hands in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for your people, Lord. Oh, Father, I thank you for them. I thank you for my brothers. I thank you for my sisters. I thank you for the ecclesia. I thank you for the called out one. I pray, oh, Father, Lord God, that your word will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Help us to see yourself through the holy pericope. Help us to see yourself that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Help us to see yourself that we are the apple of your eyes. Uh, cause us to believe and understand. Uh, oh, Father, 
that you will never leave us nor will you forsake us lord god order our steps in the name of jesus Oh, Lord, we thank you. The Bible says, while praying, I have answered you. So, Father, we thank you for the blessings you have released. Father, may the blessings you have released, may it search for each and every person pray for. May it locate them, may it overtake them, may it overwhelm them, may it rest, rule, and abide permanently in their lives. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. And let the Ecclesia say, it is done and amen. Amen. Once more, I want to thank our chief prelate for having me. I want to thank you all for bearing with me. And then we are going to put up ways to give, ways to give, cash app. You see all the ways to give. Please never come into the presence of God and not give, please. Our chief prelate is the biggest example of a giver. Please let us give, let us give. Give, and it shall be given unto you good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. The reason why many of us don't have anything pressed down, shaken together, and running over, because we have not obeyed the first part of the scripture. It begins with give. So I am encouraging each and every person to give tonight. We have been blessed differently. We have different financial wherewithal and capacity. Don't look to your right and don't look to your left. Give as God has blessed you. Give according to your capacity. But please give. We're going to wait a little longer and we're going to give. Let us continue to give. Let us give. Let us give. Let us give. Let us give. I am going to give. Let us give. That's one of the things that I tell you. I can never be broke. It's not pride. It is understanding principles. It is not pride. I can never be broke. Never. I have too many seeds. I have seeds that are growing and I have seeds that have been grown and they are as strong as the cedar of Lebanon. Thank you, Miss Vicky Young. She said this was an excellent both teaching and prayer. Thank you, Miss Vicky. And this is what we ought to do. Please go to your chief prelate when he preaches, when he teaches, and say thank you. He's human. Iron sharpeneth iron. Go to him and say thank you, sir. You were a blessing. Thank you. Let us go to our pastors. Let us go to the ministers. Let us go and just say thank you. You know, every time my son eats, he comes to me, says, Mom, thank you for the food. Even though he made it, he comes to me and says, thank you for the food you've provided. I am mere human. Do you know how I feel? Let's go to our chief prelate. Let's go to God and just say, thank you, Abba Father. I told somebody, you know, warfare is on every side, but yet there's so much joy in my spirit. I can't explain it. Warfare, but joy at peace. Those whose minds are stayed on Christ will be kept in perfect peace. Now we're going to end. Continue. Write the ways down to give and let us continue to give. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining me. This is Jen Harvey of the Bible Says International Ministries and the Ministries of the Hustle, not the Huddle. May the peace, presence, power, purpose, provision, protection, promises and providence of God rest and abide permanently with you is my prayer. Friends, I love you. Go forth and thrive.